Hello everyone! Welcome to Switchcraft, the Fingerboard Podcast, episode number six. I'm Jana, and I'm sitting here with... What's good? I'm Julian, your co-host. And yeah, Julian just returned from the VU, which from Europe is quite the trip. And exactly. Yeah, today we're going to talk a bit about the trip itself, VU, and also about how European contests or gatherings are different to American events or North American events. Yeah, exactly. We're going to make a bit of a comparison, we're going to try to point out the differences and yeah, get you through how the experiences can vary from themselves. And a little bit of upkeeping. We're n- we now can be found at switchcraft-podcast.com instead of the usual SoundCloud uh, account. Yeah, we moved over there. It's still a work in progress due to something I'm going to talk about now. We were going to record another episode before Yuyan left, but I broke my arm. Gladly, my non-fingerboarding arm. <laughs> yeah, so the work on the website can be a bit slow, but yeah, like we know from other websites, stay tuned. (laughs) (laughs) And and, yeah, uh, another thing, maybe in the future we try to do a live stream on one of these episodes. And yeah, we're going to do that over Instagram, we're going to announce it a few days in advance. And yeah, yeah, we just need to figure a few things out. Exactly, like proper yes. timing and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah, so let's just jump right in. Ooh. So, how long were you in in the US? I was in the US. I arrived in Boston on the 1st of April on Fool's Day. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, <laughs> after a 10-hour trip... Uh, Oh, funny, funny thing. I had to walk to the airport because um, there was no before gear, no, no, which is no the, traffic. Uh, which uh, is like the uh, the public transport. Yeah, exactly. Government thing uh, in in Berlin. Yeah, they were on a strike, so I was completely on foot. Um, but I still managed to get to Boston, and I arrived there at nearly five p.m. Got picked up from the airport by Harry, Mike and Isaac, Mike's roommate. Um, Yeah, we drove back to Andover after a quick burger pit stop. And uh, first American burger was gorgeous, uh, like uh, half ground meat and half bacon. I mean, who comes up with that? (laughs) That's just... (laughs) Wow. Yeah, um... Um, Knowing you, I was a bit anxious for you that you didn't make the trip because, like, <laughs> you you have a bit of a habit of running late, and I was like, let's see if you arrive there. <laughs> yeah, I did arrive. I did trash completely a pair of shoes. Like they're not, they're not usable anymore. Completely worn out. But anyway, um, and I stayed there for about 10 days and you stayed at mike's house right exactly i stayed yeah. at mike's uh in andover yeah <clears throat> and uh what i didn't know mm-hmm. was that uh you said that the location where vu is is quite quite a bit away from mike's place yeah yeah distances in the us um are a whole different scale kind of like completely um it's 25 minutes by car if you'd go in pretty fast on the short highway um tracked that you have to make um yeah it's absolutely not makeable on foot <laughs> like not at all everyone who got there had to get there by car basically um there is quite a few of the older VU locations mm-hmm. that are nearer. Like okay. sh- yeah, yeah. Th- there were this is previous locations. Yeah, yes. This I, is, I, I um, just seen this one in 
in older videos and stuff. Always. Yeah, this is the fourth, I believe. Oh. Yes, exactly. They went from a gym kind of thing, like a smaller thing, uh, back to uh, something something bigger, uh, up to a warehouse, and then this uh, this second warehouse that Mike rents. Uh, I think. No, wait, I think he even owns it. He just has to pay, like... A uh, mortgage. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's... That's, rad. that's fucking rad. And that's where all the parks are placed do you, do you permanently. Have, do you have, like, a, a scope of how many parks there were? Um, like, I could, roughly? I could count them in one of my clips, but I would say average 25. And... We get a bit into the comparing part already. I haven't been at a, a Fast Fingers in like 12 years. Yeah. Would you say there's more parks at the Rendezvous or is it comparable with Fast Fingers? I would say it's pretty comparable. Um, although first it's it's more concentrated like it's more parks and a more smaller dense. place yeah. kind of and second thing is although the number is the same the number of usable parks is greater because it's black river parks mm. and parks that mike made mm. so they're really all usable um if you try to use like one of the old super bulky Black River parks, yeah. it gets harder, you know, and that's mainly what the fast figures yeah, so storage is composed of, you know. Yeah, so there's not no really really old parks. Uh, no, there. not really. No. Okay. I think the oldest thing you can find there is a G seven. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And yeah, let's talk about the event itself. So the event is basically only one day, like the yeah. Main the event. event, the main event, so to speak, is from twelve to six p.m. at the storage room, and mm -hmm. that's the official rendezvous. But like, how it felt for me is that the event actually stays, uh, uh, um, starts at kind of Friday. Friday is mm -hmm. the first day of the event because you've got such a massive load of people inside Mike's house already on 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 Thursday basically, and on on Friday it's just thirty five forty people. So I mean that that's like from what I heard and from how we're planning it this year. It's basically the same for Fast Fingers. And it was the same for the uh, nah. Fuzzy Berlin. Like, most people arrive a day early and spend a day catching up with people. Still, it's it's not the same, I would okay. say. Because um, the main event is still the Fast Fingers. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the focus is on that. Like, all the people are hyped on that, on meeting up the others there. But the main scenery at Rendezvous is really Mike's house. Okay. Yeah, I, I I think I get your point. It's probably because of Fast Fingers is primarily a contest. Exactly, and exactly. Mike's is basically a hangout. A meetup, exactly. And in, yeah, the, when you, in the spirit of the title of the contest. Yeah, basically. and when you meet up with or other people, you, you don't really start at... 11 in the morning and you stop at 7 in the afternoon yeah it's exactly usually more fluid than a contest because a mm -hmm. contest you have to get all the people over with and have to keep it running it's a yeah. lot I, f I think it's a lot more stressful than just a regular event I mean I only can compare it with like store events at the Berlin shop versus a, a contest like as number 10 yeah, which has like completely different vibe to it, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there is even a small contest, but that's but it's not like the focus. That's not the focus at all. It takes up maybe one hour. Oh, it's okay. The judging is not super focused and super 
concerning cleanliness and stuff like that, you know. It's more of just to have fun, basically, and to leave um, all the kids who had the balls to start <laughs> up. Um, what type of contest with, is it usually? Is it a best trick? Is it a run thing? Or a game skate? Or... No, this uh, this time it was a best trick on the Makba. Because oh, nice. uh, maybe you've seen from clips all over Instagram and yeah, YouTube. Yeah, I've seen it. And I... That the Camel Pro guys, mainly the Camel Pro guy, yeah. uh, brought a, a perfect Makba uh, replica, yeah. miniature replica to rendezvous, like as a gift to Mike and the rendezvous. Just left it there, basically. Yeah, he, he like I I met him at the, at the store like yeah. a few months ago, and yeah, on Instagram he was like yeah uh, yeah it just like was collecting dusk in my living room and <laughs> was sec- acting as my couch table, so I thought other people would enjoy it more. Yeah, and that's really an enjoyable park because it's yeah. just perfect. It's. It's simple, but it really, really works. And yeah, it was basically just the best trick. Five tries. Mm-hmm. Go for it. And just, like, really, the the main focus was to leave every kid that started up and, and entered in the contest with a small prize. Yeah. Like an encouragement thingy. Yeah. Which uh, could probably help. <laughs> like, I mean, we we basically did that at uh, Azzy as well. Yeah, yeah. So, and and for the kids, we were like uh, giving them things that they would <coughs> enjoy more than other people, like tech decks and sure, stuff like that. Sure. Just a spare pair of trucks, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, would you say that the Makba Plaza was your favorite park there, or definitely, I would say yes, yeah, for sure. Um, there were other parks that Mike made that were amazing, like uh, one that was at his house that was just sick. Um, what, it had a ledge. Mean? It had a ledge made made out of. Um, of, of skateboards, basically. I, I know which one you're talking yeah. about. I, I was about asking if it if you mean that one, but yeah, yeah. that that looks rad. Right? Really is super fun to ride, and I I think for most Europeans it's like the same as for most Americans. Most Americans are like, oh, once in a, in my life I have to go to Fast Fingers and to all the German locations and European locations. And for us, it's like, at least once I have to go to Voo. Yeah, but um, the thing is, it starts out as that. And now my mindset is... The next one. I have to make this at least an annual thing. Like, honestly, I have to go again, for sure. I really want to go... At least next year as well. Yeah, we're going to organize a Berlin trip plane. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, so um, after the the main event at Warehouse is done, yeah, you just hang out at Mike's? Or... Exactly, you ride back to Mike's house and then there's like the strategic ride because mm-hmm. everybody leaves the location at about 6.30 mm-hmm. and we left the location next at six mm-hmm. because we wanted to take a shower because <laughs> yeah. you know if there's like 40 people you're not gonna want to use the toilet it's or like block the toilet yeah. so we rode back a bit earlier and just uh everybody arrived a couple of minutes later basically and we just had a massive time up until like six in the morning and woke up the day after and were totally trashed. <laughs> but still, and, it was amazing. And how many people would you say were at Mike's place? Around 40? Yeah. Just... Yeah, 40. I would say peak would. Yeah, 40. Average and 40. 
now now to the part which I always uh, find the most interesting about the events. Uh-huh. I I don't really care too much about the contests or the yeah. parts. For me, it's more more about getting to know new people and yeah, yeah. riding with new people and. That was that was amazing. That was because it, it's you're accustomed to certain faces, you know. Yeah, you know, like okay, especially that's, that's Yeldo. Yeah, like especially uh, at the Azi Berlin store. I yeah. think we're in a bit of a minority in the fingerboard uh, group that uh, or community that we ha- get that like basically every yeah. Saturday and. A couple times during the week where we meet up with a bunch of friends and exactly. uh, meet a few other people we know there and someone from out of town shows up and yeah it's it's always like a like a little get together and i think yeah. for someone who mostly think about alone at his or her desk that's a very much rare thing to get to know other people yeah and es- especially other people that you have kind of seen, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a, um, you know their the, hands. Yeah, exactly. There was this guy that was fingerboarding, uh, uh, and I was like, "What's your IG, pocket border?" Fuck, I know you, awesome star. I thought I recognized it. Like, and that happened to me with a lot of people, actually. Shout out to Jeff, he taught me how to dab invisible chopsticks, I believe. Awesome style, awesome dude. Thank you for the advice. <laughs> and one, one small gripe that I have in situations like that. If you have a fingerboarding account on Instagram, please at least show one image where you show your face. Because so many times <laughs> I, I've been at the store and someone walks in and... They walk, uh, and I don't really get to talk with them because I'm like eating pizza or something like that. And then they leave, and I was like, "Oh, that one was there." Ah, uh, damn it! <laughs> and yeah. yeah, so that ha- really helps at events to get get talking. Yeah, for sure. Also, um, the other aspect was meeting people that I have been watching for half my life thinking mm. about, like genuinely i've i've met most but people like um pat mcginn for example mm. uh, i've seen his first clip when i was i think maybe like 13 or something or it's still i, I still get a bit starstruck when I see Jay fingerboard like six tricks in four seconds. I was waiting for you to, yeah, uh, to mention it, him. No, honestly, it's just amazing. It just so uh, were the uh, who were the like most notable people you met there, like either companies or just cool fingerboarders, or was there anyone in particular where you were like? Yeah. Oh, so glad that I got to meet this person or two people in particular definitely deserve a shout out. First one is definitely Matt from Joy Cult. That is just one of the purest human beings I've ever known and also such a just such a friendly dude of yeah. Um and and the other one is Alex Rogan. I, I don't know if you um, know him. No, it doesn't, just, doesn't ring a bell. Just awesome guy. Like, really, really chilled human beings. Honestly, open minded, and you know, I, I don't know, it's, it's something different. Getting to meet people in Germany, I feel it's different. Just what, what, you get you get greeted differently. Okay. There's a sort of openness towards everyone in America. There's just mm. like ah oh, whatever, super friendly, and super open, almost Mediterranean kind of. Okay. And um, I don't know. Some people say it's shallow. Maybe it is. Who gives a fuck? 
I think I, um, I'm I'm quite German. Like I yeah, I, exactly reserved like my, yeah. and, and and personal space. Who's around me? Who's around? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like it's more like that in Europe, um, and and there it's it's different. Yeah, just and, different. And also like the the personal space. I I quite have an issue with that when I'm at events where. Oh, you're yeah. at the park and <sighs> suddenly you have sweat on both of your arms and it's not coming from you. It's coming <laughs> from the person standing yeah. next to you and basically butting against your shoulder. Yeah, and your finger butting and suddenly a hand rises yeah. up in yeah. between from your elbow. Your exactly. And, yeah, and, <laughs> and it's, it's like the fingerboard equ- equivalent to snaking in a skate park. Um, like... You just there sure. having having a session, and of course, I I can understand that at like contests, everyone wants to ride the park to get to know it and yeah. figure out new tricks to do in the run, or also just to just warm up and stuff yeah, like that. And yeah, yeah. I also get that it's not cool when someone's standing at a spot for like thirty minutes, uh-huh. but I I think there's there's ways to to handle it better. Uh, did you experience that as well at at Vu? Because just for the record, at yeah. Fast Fingers, that's pretty much something you have to expect. <laughs> like there, there's a lot of people usually at Fast Fingers. Yeah. Um, how many people do you think were at Vu in oh. general? I wouldn't know. Or would you say there is more people at a typical Fast Fingers or? I have work. seen fast fingers that were bigger than Vu. Mm-hmm. But I say I think this Vu was bigger than than the last fast fingers. Oh, okay, cause, so it's cause about 200 people average on crazy. on peak time. I would say cuz I always average. imagined uh, or maybe it it's being just 150, like, I don't know. Cuz I always imagined it being like maybe half the size of fast fingers. But uh, like I said, I I never been to a Vu, and I yeah. haven't been to a Fast Fingers in like twelve years, so yeah, yeah, it, it's. But from pictures and everything, I always thought that Fast Fingers basically the whole European scene shows up, and I didn't think that everyone at the stage shows up to every Vu, yeah. but yeah. But like the April Vu is usually bigger the than November. the November one. Yeah. At least that's what I was told. Um, it was big. I I'm not quite sure, to be honest, because I was mainly fingerboarding. Yeah, you so, weren't counting. Heads. Yeah, exactly. So I would say it's on peak time between one hundred and twenty and two hundred people. Which is a pretty wide range, I and know. But do they, do they take a fee? They do take a fee, right? Yeah, they take a fee. They take so, a small entry fee. It's like yeah. two dollars or something. Yeah. Um, so, so maybe uh, Mike would know numbers. Or, maybe yeah. plus us, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't think he. But were. to come back to the park thingy, um, you experience small spaces at Vu, but still it's more relaxed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like my experience no is... No one has to get a run. Exactly. In, the contest it. park. You don't get to touch the contest park until your run and the Fast Fingers after session at Fast Fingers. At Vu, there is no contest. So mm. there's not the direction of... Uh, overzealousness over one specific park yeah like there's no people massively crowding over it the makba was crowded at first that was just the excitement of seeing it yeah, and sure. riding it um and well nico frank just destroyed it but he went his rounds so it's cool um yeah, like he, he he takes maybe three tries for the trick, so he doesn't he doesn't block he doesn't up take the, a lot of time. exactly he doesn't block up the spot for too long, um, 
And so it was basically the the older people, the more experienced riders uh, around the Makba for the first one or two hours. Mm. And then they just distribute it. And then it was cool. And then you could ride it. And then it was chilled. Yeah. So it's more chilled in that perspective. But, but there's still like the basic kid making an ollie, bumping into you, then looking at yeah. you, then making his second ollie, and then looking at you again, and you're like, yeah, what now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's cool, I mean. We, we've all been there. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Some more than others. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, if I would put you on the spot, yeah, which one do you like more for? If you if you only could go to one event in a year, would you go to Fast Fingers or Vu? Wow! Dis disregarding the price of getting there. Okay, okay, okay. Um, that's a hard one. I really have to say that's a fucking hard one. Because uh, on on the one hand, you have like at least for the European scene, we all kind of know each other. Like, yeah. I there's a lot of people I haven't met yet, but there's a lot of people who are, who I have met yet. So at Fast Fingers, I would expect to meet all the rest of the of the core from the European scene and yeah. meet all the faces I I met in the last few years and hang out with them, have a beer with them, have a game of skate. And in Vu, I would basically meet people who I have never met before. Yeah. So I I think it's that that could be like a deciding factor. Yeah. Do you want to catch up with people which are more who are more accessible to you or meet an entire different section of people? Yeah, I mean the entirely different section of people thing is surely a selling point for Vu, yeah. to be honest. Um and also it's super rad and super mind opening to having heard so much about the US and actually mm. being there and being able to experience things firsthand. So I would say VU is definitely the more essential okay. experience, but still there's an emotive connection for me to Fast Fingers. You yeah, know? I, I, so I can get that. Like starting up and always having heard of that and wanting to go forever and finally being there and being so fucking overwhelmed. Yeah, I mean, like that was my first I, I huge can, contest. I came back to the scene like three years ago, as I mentioned a lot of times, <laughs> and there hasn't been a Fast Fingers since because I came yeah. back, like I think... A week after Fast Fingers, I walked into the store or oh, something like that. That's such a shame. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and there just haven't been one uh, or any for the past two years. So I'm quite excited to go back again. And the thing is, um, Fast Fingers also gathers some people from the American scene. Like, still, yeah. Fast Fingers is definitely way more international okay. than Rendezvous. So you you get to meet basically a, an even a good broader portion. spectrum. Yeah. Um, still, I really couldn't, couldn't be, be, yeah. be pin, pinned down on a decision, to be honest. Yeah. Like. Um, and at VU, did you, like, I know that a lot of, like, cool new things <coughs> brought to VU every time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not, not even the park, as, as we just mentioned, but also like people coming up with new products oh, or yeah. seeing products for yeah. the first time. Like, for example, Harry, uh, like the Dirty wow. Harry brought back the uh, the magazine, which... Uh, oh yeah, Ocho, yeah. Ocho, shout like, out to you Andrew. Because it's basically along the lines of what we do. Of course, in a different form. Exactly. But yeah. I, I really, I was really digging that magazine, especially as someone who professionally did magazines in the past. I have a huge love for print magazines, so keep, keep, keep it up. 
Yeah, thank you, Andrew, for keeping print alive. Massive MVP right there. Yeah. Um, but also products. Yeah. Holy fuck, knuckles! <laughs> it feels like every third individual there had an actual company, mm. or okay, let's not say an actual company. Did, let's did say stuff. a company did yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, there was just everything. Um, yeah, I mean, like to interrupt you for a second. Yeah. A lot of different different things, like the different hobbies, have their like fairs and events that happen once a year where all the new product is released or announced. Uh-huh. And I feel like Vu and maybe Fast Fingers are our equivalent to that. Exactly. Where companies exactly. Drop their new stock or. Yeah. Come up with new exciting things. And Vu is even richer in products than Fast Fingers because mm-hmm. you've got all the little brands yeah. in the US, for example, like Ravi Sauce or Yandex, which I personally haven't ever tried, but still, yeah, yeah. they are there. Okay. Um, uh, you've got Matt from Joy Cult running around, he made his first trip. Uh, out of his country, shout out oh, for for cool. making such a brave move. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you've got you've got everyone running around, and plus, since Mike is the official US Black River and Burnwood distributor, mm-hmm. you also got that. So it's everything, just everything. Yeah. yeah. Was there any any new product that you saw? Maybe oh yeah, new to you. That yeah, for sure. Really hit you. Um, Cowply just released his uh, first real wear graphics, and I got a first hand glimpse of those. I couldn't snag myself one, but it's fine next time. Um, and the funny thing is that there were small paper graphic elements under the real wear. Oh, okay. So super interesting and. Actually, you, you could actually, like, see them a bit it's through, kind of rude, but not yeah. really. Really cool detail. Um, I mean, also, I know that, like, being a huge yeah. Five uh, Five Like fan myself, I know that Bert brought the, the first wave of real wear Five yeah. Likes to there, and you brought me some, and Woo. I love them, <laughs> as always. <laughs> oh, that's that's also a super cool human being, like... Super nice. Yeah. Really, really nice. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, and you have to watch out for Loft. This brand is not yet a thing, but um, whoever knows Ryan Bernier, um, maybe one of the best American fingerboarders, uh... He's making these um, planters and other granite and marble obstacles that are just amazing. He wet saws them and then wet polishes them. It's just so smooth. Yeah, like you brought home one of them. Like Oh, yes. Uh, first of all, it looks gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, we're probably gonna put uh, an image of that in the show notes. It's uh, let's do that for yeah, sure. It's it's a bench, basically, uh, but it has like a a little mini pad behind the backside of the bench. Exactly. So it's a it's a bench manual pad combo kind of thing. Yeah, and <coughs> and for me it was it was even a bit too perfect <laughs> like i i know that sounds a bit picky but it was like really 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 smooth you don't hear any sound of uh, when grinding and stuff like that and it's amazing like um, it's really smooth like you can't un- underestimate the the difference that makes when when riding yeah it's it's crazy um but i think like getting worn through time it yeah. will eventually get a rougher grind feeling. Yeah. I just think it's just a super long living obstacle kind of thing. Yeah, it it like it's basically solid. Is it marble or granite? 
Um, the backside is granite, and the bench is labradorite, which is uh, basically a kind of granite. Yeah. So but it's super hard, actually. Yeah, and it's like like solid material so yeah I, I think it will last for a while exactly exactly and he also makes planters which you probably have seen in clips from the dirty harry and mike um super good obstacles and i hope he will be uh making those available soon because it's just amazing it's i love that thing it's yeah. it has not moved from my table since the first session on it. And so the company name is Loft, right? Um, um, or... Yeah, that's what he settled on the last day I was there. <laughs> oh, okay, so... It hasn't changed, but yeah. So we're calling it Loft. It may have a different name by now, but... Yeah, it, it may have. I'll ask him eventually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and... Um... So, uh, staying on the topic of news, um, a few people have asked me about the status, uh, like, we're mo moving to Germany back again now, so a few people have asked me about the status of the store, like the Asi Berlin store, and yeah, since we're both locals there and uh, I help TKY with the website, uh, we both know a bit more than... The average but also yeah. he's quite transparent about that like um so basically what what was going on is that in the past it was the black river store then the black river store closed and timo continued in the same location as the Azi berlin store and he didn't make like an, uh, a new contract with the uh, with the landlord he just stayed in the same contract that uh, Martin Ernberger from Black River set up, which meant that uh, when he wasn't able to pay rent, which happened in January, it fell back to Martin Ernberger. Yep. That isn't a cool thing. It doesn't matter what you think of Black River as a brand or the individuals behind that, it's still not cool to have to pay money for basically something you don't have anything to do with. So. Uh, Timo now has the contract in his own hands and because of that it's now a three month uh, notice period. Before that, because he didn't have a contract with the landlord directly, he could basically move out anytime he wanted and be like, I'm done. And yeah, Black River would have to deal with finding something new for the place and etc etc. So now, basically, at every time, it's still going to be at, around for at least three months, because that's the notice period we're working <laughs> with. So that, that is at least, for those people planning a journey, that is something we can more or less guarantee. So um, wait, wait, wait. So we've got um, May, June, July. Okay. Guys, it's safe if you want to come to Fast Fingers to Berlin yeah. first and then to Schwarzenbach. It's all cool. And uh, Timo is also currently working on, on the setup for uh, Fast Fingers since he's obviously going himself. He's looking uh, or he's asking a few people who worked at the shop before if they can, can look after the store for one or two days. But yeah, I'm... If you're in Germany, what are you even doing in Berlin? Like, that's the only time I would tell you, what are you even doing in Berlin? Come down to Schwarzbach. And, and you're more than welcome to go to the store before or after Fast Fingers. I think a lot of people will, but... Yeah. Like, starting Friday, you should be moving to Schwarzenbach, yeah, which that's... is in northern Bavaria. That's what we have instructed all the Americans yeah. that we have uh, tried to convince to come to Fast Fingers. Come to Berlin like a week in advance and then come move with down us. with us. Yeah. Yeah, and that's going to be massive if that is going to be pulled yeah. through. And uh, one more thing uh, for the the health of the store. Um, 
like I said, Timo couldn't pay rent in January. It sucked. And it looked like he can't pay rent in February. So he, uh, he basically set up a meeting with all the locals. And the plan is that all the locals, and so far it's just the locals, that we basically made an agreement if it doesn't work out with the rent we got you so we have like a, a bunch of people we both agreed to paying 25 euros if the rent doesn't get paid otherwise or the rent and the expenses so that is something like a like a fallback system and timo is thinking about expanding that program to uh, to the German scene as a whole, but so far it's just the the locals from the Azi Berlin store. But also, um, Azi Berlin has a patron. If you can, are, if you, if you can afford a couple bucks, or if you if you care about that and can afford it, like we as locals and also Timo are more than grateful for everyone who but chips also, in. Also the scene, I mean, the thing is Berlin has been such an important hub for international thing, fingerboarding over the years because we have that pre the place, yeah. that place that we can all kind of gravitate back to. Exactly. It's the perfect after session it's the perfect place for a beer it's the perfect place for a hangout for a yeah. skate it's just and it has been there for so long please yeah. help us maintain it yeah and also um uh, timo is currently working out a deal with the postal service uh, that he can like uh, it's a bunch of contract signings <laughs> which uh, brings down shipping costs especially to the u.s Ooh. I think uh, uh, the number he, uh, he mentioned to me is uh, it would be 30 instead of 40 bucks. It's I know that it's still a lot, but I think he once mentioned something that he can bring it down to 20. But I think there has to be like a, a quota. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, there has to be like a quota you, you meet and stuff like that. So yeah. shipping is definitely getting cheaper at least 10 bucks that's what i know for sure maybe more and yeah if you but the the 30 to 40 bucks like 40 right now basically don't depend on what you're ordering so if you have a few friends and all of you want like a harrier and a Aussie brick and maybe a new berlin wood or something like that just yeah. look at the store and order in bulk yeah and, <laughs> and divide the shipping cost between two people and yeah so if you can support the show uh, the store there are many ways to do that and if you're in berlin come to the store hit us up shop shop yeah come to the shop <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah but that basically covers the the status of the uh, of things of, the, of things yeah and yeah one uh one thing for the future for for us for the podcast oh yes while we... you were in in the us you organized a little something exactly we will have uh, our little podcast with mike schneider one of these days and we're gonna um, probably get that through skype or somehow and we wanted to ask you the people <laughs> you specifically if, listening. <laughs> if you have um any suggestions for questions oh that's a nice rhyme um we, uh, yeah anything you'd to, like to ask basically yeah, yeah and we're gonna try to cover as many as possible and yeah we're probably looking at recording uh, recording it in the next month or something yeah like that's in, that's hope, hopefully yeah in the, ne in the next in the next few weeks so sounds good yeah and uh once we set up a date and everything and got got everything to work because we have to figure out a few technical things yeah we will sure. uh, make a post on on the uh switchcraft uh instagram 
uh, account and yeah you will be able to answer the story with questions and yeah, yeah. And then take it from there yeah so yeah yeah and upcoming events we basically just have fast fingers at yeah, the exactly. 6th of july as we've been talking about for a while now and in november we have the event the off the rails in devon england uh, on the 23rd of november organized okay. by uh, the fingerboard queen <laughs> with a bunch of sponsors that even rival the Azi berlin number of sponsors oh, wow. like the number of sponsors for Azi 10 good job adrian yeah so yeah stay tuned for that and i think yeah that's it yeah so thank you so much for listening and tune in next time yeah bye cheers